I guess that, that gets us to another question, actually, which, again, relates to another one of your articles, which I really liked, which is, um, I think it's called Alex Jones, Cast Sunstein and Cognitive Infiltration. It's, it's something like that. I, I shared on my Telegram a while back. But it, it relates to the phenomenon of, of conspiracy theories. And, you know, obviously, neither of us are like blanket against conspiracy theories. I mean, if people look at the American Pravda series, right, you have you have um, alternative takes on, on 9-11 and, and JFK and, uh, you know, your COVID theory and a host of other things. But you did analyze this phenomenon, which is interesting, um, the idea of uh, cognitive infiltration, that there was this uh, advisor to Barack Obama, uh, Cass Sunstein, that wrote a paper where he, he talked about flooding the discourse um, of conspiracy theories to kind of introduce like bad or ridiculous theories to kind of discredit um, anti-government narratives. Um, it was actually Michael Collins Piper that, that talked about exactly. this a lot. You, you cited one of his books. Um, you thought an example of this was like the, the Sandy Hook thing, the narrative of crisis actors which is a narrative that's kind of persisted. Um, you know, I've seen that for other uh, events like that since. Um, but maybe uh, an obvious example people could think of is like some of the ridiculous theories that went around about 9-11, like uh, that there was no planes, that there were holograms yeah. or, uh, you know, it was missiles or something. Um, but yeah, just a, a lot of very, very bad, very weird uh, conspiracies uh, related to 9-11. Um, I'm just curious, like, because you're obviously pushing this theory about the origins of COVID. Um, but at the same time, there's been a lot of, you know, I think very bad, very weird conspiracies that have popped up on the right since the origin of COVID. And it seems like it kind of um, shifted the right into a much more sort of conspiratorial frame. Like, uh, you know, suddenly um, this old sort of Bircher society narrative about yeah. the UN controlling the world or Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates implementing global communism. This was like the very popular new frame yeah. among the right and kind of surprising how mainstream it's gone in terms of um, like establishment conservatives talk about that kind of thing now. But, you know, you're you're obviously pushing this theory about the origins of COVID, but then you have theories out there, you know, COVID doesn't exist. Um, there was these weird like 5G theories. I remember <laughs> back in 2020. Actually, I remember those few months like there was it was a it was a weird time in terms of all of the you know I almost forget about some of them like but like the five G theory that there was nanobots going to be activated by five G <laughs> towers all this kind of stuff so yeah I'm just curious do you think um, do you think that was a, a case of of what you described with the the cognitive infiltration and like flooding the zone with with bad narratives do you think we're seeing a lot of that on the right I think that's very possible in other words you know if you're trying if you're trying to basically hide something that, you know, is as serious as the scenario I'm talking about. One way of doing it is obviously, just as you're saying, to sort of flood the zone with a proliferation of every possible conspiracy theory so as to distract people, have them wandering off in different directions. I mean, the strange thing about it is, in nearly all ways, my COVID scenario is actually a very mainstream establishment sort of scenario. In other words, you know, almost everything I'm saying about COVID is pretty much what you'd find in the New York Times or most of these other publications, with the one exception being that it was an American biowarfare attack. Now, you know, the fact that America spent probably a hundred billion dollars on its biowarfare infrastructure over the last 60 or 70 years, the fact that we have the world's largest biowarfare program, the fact that it's the oldest biowarfare program, the fact that, you know, again, it, it's been giving out money through the EcoHealth Alliance and all these other groups monitoring bio facilities around the world. I mean, all of that is stuff you can just read in the New York Times. And the one element that is never discussed in the mainstream media is the possibility that elements of the American government might have used that biowarfare infrastructure. And, you know, the truth is, when a mysterious, dangerous virus suddenly appears in the two countries that America is most hostile towards, I mean, it's not all that irrational to start wondering whether it might have been an American biowarfare attack. And when you start looking at the facts, I mean, one reason I've often said people are so reluctant even to raise this possible issue is because once they do, the pattern is so clear, the evidence is so strong. I mean, the fact that basically the Iran, the top Iranian leadership 
was effect, infected with COVID in the holy city of Gum just a few weeks after we'd assassinated their top military commander. I mean, that's an awfully remarkable coincidence. And you know, when all of these factors are brought into play, I, I think probably people would fairly quickly decide it's at least as plausible as the other scenarios that they've been discussing. So, you know, the problem is it once you sort of open the door, I, I think you'll have a lot of people starting to ask themselves whether a million Americans died and we had years worth of lockdowns because of the blowback from a botched American biowarfare attack. And when you're talking about, for example, Americans, I mean, the suffering Americans underwent, I mean, probably the COVID epidemic, you know, including everything about it, all the lockdowns, the deaths, the controversy over the vaccines, everything like that. This is the worst disaster to hit the United States since the Great Depression. I mean, huge numbers of deaths, huge amount of inconvenience, our entire economy was disrupted. And the fact that there's a very real possibility, it was because of a botched American biowarfare attack is probably almost too horrifying for most Americans to even contemplate. But, you know, we really have to ask ourselves, I mean, why did we get ourselves into the situation? In other words, America's biowarfare facilities had already gotten uh, back in the 19, I think it was around 1968 or 1969, there was a famous case of a nerve gas facility in Utah that leaked and it killed 5,000 sheep. If the wind had blown in a different direction, the nerve gas would have probably devastated Salt Lake City, Utah, and probably killed tens of thousands of Americans. For that reason, Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, a year or two later, ended up announcing that we were terminating, we were abandoning our biowarfare facilities, and we signed on to international conventions to ban biowarfare. So in theory, biowarfare has been banned all these years, but it's been brought in through the back door under the grounds of biodefense. In other words, th there's really no difference between biodefense and biowarfare. In other words, the argument is you produce all these dangerous viruses so that you can better defend against them. And the problem is, you know, whether it's a lab leak or whether it's something else, I mean, we've now had probably 20 million people around the world die from the impact of COVID. And if COVID had been more dangerous, if it had mutated in a more dangerous rather than a less dangerous direction, we could have had many, many tens of millions of deaths around the world. So, I mean, I, I just think it's just unconscionable that neither the media, neither the mainstream media, nor even almost any of the alternative media until very recently has been willing to look at the facts regarding the COVID outbreak and the evidence that I've been writing about now for three years. One thing I should say is in the last few months, I've been very impressed with the work that's been done by uh, the Daily Skeptic, which is a British alternative newspaper, uh, alternative media outlet focused on COVID. They've really had a series, the editors had a series of very good articles going through a lot of these issues connecting up the dots, and I'd certainly recommend them very much. But I mean, the point is, aside from the daily skeptic, and aside from the work that I've done and a very small number of people here or there, almost all of the alternative media has been very unwilling to look at the reality of what probably happened. And now that, for example, the COVID epidemic is winding down, now I think to some extent, probably the controversy over the uh, health measures taken to control it are subsiding. I, I think it's much more important that people go back and ask how this disaster happened, especially with some of the hearings that the Republicans are now having in the House about you know the, um, the efforts that were made on the part of Fauci and others to basically start developing some of these dangerous viruses and do some of the bioengineering that could have led to the creation of COVID. Yeah, I mean, just on the topic more broadly of of um china and the us 